the Dauntless. Well, that's certainly a lovely scent. However, aren't you more of an Earl Grey man? Admiral Cistern asks as he enters his office. The smell of blueberry tea is faint but still present. Yes, sir, Sir Philip states. Am I going to get any clarification? Admiral Cistern asks. We had a guest and a very pleasant conversation, nothing to be concerned about. Really? Was she here for me or... She was snooping, sir. However, she's going to be much more careful in the future. And that's a loaded phrase if I've ever heard one. Admiral Cistern remarks. Just some low priority information and I've got a bit of an in with the Therocyte Republic. Therocyte? Therocyte? Remind me, who are they? The buffer state neighbors and political refuge of those who no longer wish to live with two of your new suitors, sir. Sir Philip remarks and Admiral Cistern sighs. Of course, it's funny. I honestly expected the madness of our own troops to draw the most attention to us in this galaxy. Go figure that it's a literal comic book villain instead. The most attention at the moment, sir. Your boys are very stiff and have consistent competition. Sir Philip reminds him. Indeed. Has the expected call arrived yet? No, sir. A direct communication from the Empress would be brought to you regardless of the situation. Hmm. She's waiting on something. It's not like her to let a situation like the Lil Batulelb incident go without comment. Admiral Sister notes. Perhaps she's waiting for more details to come out. Perhaps, but there are a lot of details that are available. The creation of a second dark forest, or perhaps bright forest as this new one is called. The facilitation of a young girl running away from home, even if done by one of her own citizens, was aided and abetted by my men. The cultural reach of her empire is poised to engulf another world and we have silence. Perhaps she's waiting to see if this new forest has sorcerers of its own, Sir Philip offers and Admiral Cistern considers. Maybe. The situation there has moved fast and then been snapped into secrecy. Patience is a virtue and waiting to have all the information is just one way it manifests, Admiral Cistern notes. Indeed, sir. Anything of note from the latest session? There has been a shift of 0.002 degrees on the major axiom lanes and cruel space is expected to shift several light years to the side because of it. Earth is still going to be damn near in the middle, but we're going to be slightly to the left side. Hmm? Would this open up new avenues of escape? Sir Philip asks. Possibly. The shortest egress route out of cruel space was the route we took, but we may be able to escape out the side, but from the projected images it might, emphasis on might, provide a slighter, shorter route out. It will need to be confirmed, though. The actual movement of cruel space has yet to happen. It is very interesting, though, and possibly advantageous, Sir Philip remarks. Yes, yes it is. As many people seem to struggle with, space is in motion. So, of course, the galactic cartography shifts. It is difficult to feel like the galaxy is moving when you're on a planet, sir, Sir Philip remarks. Indeed it does. Oddly enough, this is a situation where having your feet on the ground can actually be distracting, Admiral Cistern states as he heads for his desk. There's a chime as someone is at the door. No time at all. Indeed not, sir. Do you require more coffee to continue? No, I've had enough for now. The line between being tired and wired is one that's hard enough to balance on without overindulging, Admiral Cistern states and Sir Philip nods. Of course, sir, I applaud your prudence and restraint. Sir Philip states and Admiral Cistern gives him a slightly pointed look. Thank you, Sir Philip. Answer the door, please. Admiral Cistern states and the proper old man gives him a slight bow and then heads to the door to the ambassadorial office. The door is open to reveal a woman in a purple cloak with hood and veil. So Overlady La Akhbaran is apparently forcing the issue. The representative of the Overlady pauses before stepping in. The woman's bodyguards start following her in, but following them in are several of the larger undaunted outside of the Titan squads. Where are they? 
the representative asks. Could you be more specific, please? Admiral Cistern asks from his desk as a private stream comes in and places some paperwork on his desk. Thank you, private stream. You know who I'm talking about. I cannot read minds, madam. Admiral Cistern states even as he starts poring over the paperwork before turning to private stream. More complaints that we favor male recruits over females. The young-looking soldier shrugs. I don't know, sir. I don't read your paperwork. The private outright lies and Admiral Cistern turns back to the paperwork. I think it's just the stupid ones complaining. Yes. Many people don't realize that making something unique more accessible makes it less unique. Admiral Sister notes as he reads over the complaint and then tosses the papers into a trash can. Anything else? He's handing another folder by private stream as the representative of Overlady La Aberon simmers hotter and hotter as she's outright ignored. This is good news with this new ship. Where are they? The representative demands, slamming her fists into his desk. Madam, will you behave in a calm and rational manner or be escorted from my office? Admiral Cistern says sharply. Now, this second-hand ship that was just bought. I don't see a patent number on it for identification. It's Kludger, sir. Imagine if someone took an entire scrap yard and welded it all together into a working ship. They're cheap to make, but ugly. This one is best we can find, which can easily be retrofitted into a combat monster without much effort. A few coats of paint after that, and it may go from ugly as sin to all right. The ship's blueprints and picture are at the back, Private Stream explains. Interesting, Admiral Cistern says as he looks at the blueprints of a very chunky-looking ship. It's shaped like a fist minus the thumb made out of polygons. Each curled finger has a pair of engines on it, and the whole thing is covered in enough hard points to turn the thing into less a ship than a flying weapons platform. He glances through things again, and as he can almost see the steam shooting out of the representative's ears. Hmm, well, it's nice to know that playing nice with the police is helping us out. It's wonderful to find such treasures in police auctions. Any ideas on what to name her, sir? Did she have a name beforehand? Admiral Cistern asks. It's, I will not be insulted, the representative declares. You're not being insulted, you're being ignored. There is a different child. Admiral Cistern says tartly, I am four times your age. And you act barely a fourth of his age. Admiral Cistern remarks, tilting his head towards private stream. You... Do recall that my soldiers are behind yours, and unlike yours, they are trained to kill their opponents and not simply intimidate them, Admiral Cistern says. And the representative looks behind herself and takes note of the weapons leveled at her own guards. You break out in violence here, and there will be a quick and brutal lesson on the difference between tools for intimidation and tools for murder. You think my guards can only intimidate? The representative demands, and Admiral Cistern gives a very unimpressed scan of the armored women, the spikes, the face masks with scowling demons for images, the big oversized plasma weapons that look like they're off a Metallica concert set. I think they fail at even intimidation, Admiral Cistern states in a supremely unimpressed tone. You little... One of the overlady's thugs begins, and there's the smack of a rifle butt slamming into a helmet hard enough to drive a woman to the ground. Admiral Cistern does not look up. Not EFL. That's a foreign legion working with and under the Undaunted. The Undaunted space fleet would be best. The USF hook. After a punch, sir? Well, it does look somewhat like a first, does it not? With all the potential weapon emplacements, it will certainly be a flying sucker punch. That's one way of putting it, sir. There's another reason I'm bringing this to your attention, though. Private Stream states even as the belligerent soldier is having her wrist bound in duct tape. Duct tape that's going over the eye slots of her mask before being dragged bodily from the room without a word and thrown into the hallway like so much trash. 
Will there be anything else, madam? Admiral Cistern asks, as he does not look up from the blueprints of his new ship. I... I just want to know where my troops are. They have been detained for attempted kidnapping. They will be released into custody when they have been appropriately disarmed and processed. After that, they will likely have a court hearing to attend. When you decide you mean... Madam, I am very much unlike your overlady. As much as I am respected by my men, the truth of the matter is that I work for them as much as they work for me. It is a reciprocal relationship. I respect and honor my men as they do the same to me. That is how I lead. When it comes to the day-to-day -day affairs of running the undaunted, only the most technical and legalistic details come to me. A short trial will ensue for your troops, and regardless of their verdict, it will fall on me to place my stamp on it. That final portion is mostly ceremonial, but it does keep me informed, he explains. So, you're not in control of your men? The representative demands with numb incredulity in their voice. I'm uncertain if you're deliberately misunderstanding me or really just that stupid, Admiral Cistern notes before sniffing. Either way, you have long worn out your welcome. Gentlemen, please escort these people from my office. Do you not fear the wrath of the representative demands even as she's grabbed by the upper arms? Overlady La Abaron. Before this day, I had struggled to remember her name. While the fact that she rules over a large portion of territory with an iron fist may terrify and inspire awe in you, in me, it only causes me to feel a deep-seated scorn. I've faced against petty tyrants thought untouchable. I've bested despotic oil barons and pirate lords with ease. Don't think that my ability to command is detracted by the necessity of scaling in this environment, Admiral Sister notes crisply. Now, please depart. No doubt more important people have need of my attention. Street urchins, for example. You? You can't do this. This office is sovereign, undaunted territory. I most certainly can do this and far, far more should it please me. Thankfully, I find the sycophants of petty tyrants undeserving of true vengeance. So be grateful that I think so lowly of your overlady. Otherwise, I would have to put in some effort to show my displeasure. Admiral Cistern warns her before turning to Private Stream. Tell me. Do you know how often ships like the soon-to-be-christened USF Hook are placed on the market? A Kludger would be an excellent ship to train a crew on. Its borrowing of dozens of different designs would mean it's an all-rounder for giving experience with specific ship types. I don't know, sir, but I do know that the biggest source of them are actually worlds like Brule, where the large Gobi population pumps these huge beasts out fairly quickly. They don't make them pretty, but they come out pretty damn tough, sir. Private Stream answers as the representative is fully hauled out of the office with her remaining guards and the door is closed. Or in other words, boss, ask your girlfriend if she gives you any time between wrestling sessions. Watch it, Jameson. I can still have you written up for insubordination. Admiral Cistern warns him. Sir, yes, sir, Agent Jameson replies. So, what do you think of our little show there? Hmm, there's a few possible reactions. She's either going to take major insults, she's going to dismiss this whole thing as a waste of time and not do anything, or she's going to get even more interested, sir. I've read through La Abaron's psychological profile fairly thoroughly, so unless my eyes glazed over something, those three options are generally what's about to happen. So, assassins and enemy action nothing or even more blatant propositions. Admiral Cistern remarks, and there's a huff of amusement from Sir Philip. Yes? I was just imagining how one can be more blatant than declaring before the entire galaxy that they intend to take you as their own and sending guards to enforce it. Sir Philip remarks. The mind boggles. Admiral Cistern states dryly. 